What makes a movie great? Is it the profit made after the release date? The awards won? Despite the many opinions on the quality of a movie, one thing is certain. With a great movie comes a great cost. Yeah, right? I'm good. Although new and evolving technologies are making movies easier to create, today's blockbusters have much larger budgets than those from previous decades. Today's films need to use marketing techniques to offset these enormous costs, but arguably one of the most well-known and successful techniques that has been used from Transformers to the newly released Spider-Man Far From Home is product placement. Product placement is the process in which manufacturers of goods or products, like Coke and Pepsi, pay for their product to be integrated into a feature film in order to gain exposure to a larger audience. To get a better understanding of how product placement works, Let's look at some iconic instances of films incorporating brands into their film. The first example of product placement making its way into a feature film can be seen from the Academy Award winning film Wings, directed by William A. Wellman in 1927. The film incorporated Hershey's chocolate into several scenes featuring the candy bar, as well as several shots of actors eating the candy. This film was precedent for many films to come in the future, setting the stage for decades of product promotions. For further understanding of product placements, let's look at some films over-exaggerating the idea of product placements itself, as well as some subtly incorporating products. The 90s, the era that brought us all things from Home Alone to Titanic, came the unforgettable Wayne's World. Along with the hilarious plotline, one of the most ridiculously obvious examples of product placements was intertwined into the movie. While ironically making fun of product placements in that people only do things because they get paid. Wayne's World simultaneously promoted a range of products from Reebok to Doritos to Pizza Hut. This scene is certainly unforgettable. Contrasting to Wayne's World, The Island by Michael Bay is also notorious for including more than 30 different brands and products into the film. Within the first three minutes, two brands are already shown and incorporated. The difference between Wayne's World and the island is that Bay was able to include the products without taking away from the viewing experience, and didn't draw attention to the products so much as in Wayne's World. Going to another dimension, E.T. the Extraterrestrial also contains examples of product placement, though theirs are much more subtle. One example during the movie is when Elliot is seen luring E.T. with a package of Reese's Pieces. If I were E.T., those pieces would entice me too. Some may be wondering, how much does it cost to have your product featured in a large-scale movie? The cost has many factors, including time on screen and how many times the product is featured. Statistics have shown companies pay anywhere between hundreds of thousands to tens of millions of dollars for placements between one second to multiple minutes. But why pay so much money? What's the benefit? Product placements are similar to commercials, in the sense they show off a product for a certain amount of time the manufacturer pays for it. But unlike commercials, the product placement will forever be tied and connected to the movie they're in. For example, if a company pays to have a commercial during the Super Bowl, its 30-second commercial will only be shown during the four-hour broadcast, not to mention competing alongside with many other well-known products. The potential for not getting noticed or recognized is a huge waste of money you can't get back. However, the Doritos bag shown in Wayne's World will always be there and can be seen anytime you view the movie. This is one of the reasons companies choose to put their products in movies. They will live on the screen for longer than they will in a commercial. Being connected to a specific movie can also bring in further revenue and connections with other movies in the same genre. But not all companies pay to have their product featured. Back to E.T., Hershey's didn't pay anything to have the product featured. Instead, they agreed to promote E.T. with a million dollars worth of advertising. There are many other examples of companies working alongside movies for a beneficial outcome for the both of them. So, is paying for a product placement worth it? The earlier agreement between E.T. and Hershey's correlated to a 65% increase in revenue during the movie's run. 1995's GoldenEye, starring Pierce Brosnan, had a $3 million product placement deal with BMW, in which they would feature the new Z3 Roadster. In advanced sales alone, BMW made a $240 million profit. Name's Bond. James Bond. With such a large success rate, product placements can be found in almost any current day movie or TV show. More and more companies are seen spending money on product placements rather than commercials, as many televisions allow you to skip or scroll past these. As films continue to evolve, so will the methods of marketing. 
but product placements continue to be one of the most beneficial ways for production companies and products to work together on a similar goal. It's interesting to see how the movie industry would turn out if Wings hadn't decided to include Hershey's into the film. All in all, to this day, product placements remain a key part of the media.